In this video, I'd like to go through a really quick tutorial of photoelectron spectroscopy, also called PES, and how it relates to atomic structure and properties in chemistry. So first, why do we use PES? First, it gives us quantitative ionization energy data for any electron in an atom. Next, it tells us the number of electrons in each sublevel or subshell, meaning the 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, etc. It gives us the fact that lower energy levels have much larger ionization energies, also called binding energies. It can prove electron configurations of atoms. It also proves that there are different interactions between the electrons and the nucleus, especially like a 2p versus a 2s. We have proof that a 2p is less tightly bound than a 2s electron. Next, we can determine the unknown identity of an element just based off that spectrum. Really quickly, in AP Chem, you really don't have to know how the device works, but I did find kind of a great link down here you can use. The big thing you need to know is that ionization energy will be plotted on one axis, also called binding energy, in electron volts. And on the other axis will be the number of electrons like this. I got this from that same site. So again, you'll have typically you'll have a high number on the left or a large number and you'll have zero or a low number on the right so that's different than what most of you would think an axis should look like the other thing down here is it might say binding energy in electron volts but it could use joules or megajoules capital M capital J as a unit down here this is just a simulation for the um, a spectrum for neon you can see that X-ray and UV are the types of photon energy that have to be sent in to remove an electron. So let's go through how this spectrum is built. First, you send in photon energy, which is Planck's constant times nu, which is frequency. We have to use X-ray and UV energy because of the high energy we need to be able to remove any electron in an atom, not just the valence. Next, the, a review would be that E equals H times nu is any type of electromagnetic radiation from radio waves out to gamma. The kinetic energy of that electron is measured, so when that leaves the atom, we have to prove that there is a missing binding energy, or there is a quantity that we can find called the ionization energy, which is also the binding energy, that we can use this formula to find it. So the energy in has to equal the energy out. So the, the photon energy going in equals the ionization energy, the binding energy, plus the kinetic energy of that electron. Just a quick review in case you didn't know, kinetic energy is calculated by taking one half mass times velocity squared. All right, so let's go through the possible kinetic energies for a neon atom. There's three of them. The first one is if we send in 1,254 electron volts, we can remove every electron from a neon atom. The first energy that's recorded is 1,252 electron volts. We're going to assume that that is from the uh, p electrons here. So when you want to find the ionization energy for those two p electrons, you take the 1,254 you subtract it from the 1,252 and you get 22 electron volts of binding energy for any of the 2p electrons. All right, what's one more type of energy? 1,206 electron volts of kinetic energy could be also measured. That's going to be assuming that those are the s electrons for the 2s. We can then find the energy of the 2s electrons binding energy by subtracting the energy in, which is the 1,254 subtract it from the 1,206, and you get 48, which proves that, again, S electrons are more tightly bound. You might be saying, how do we know those are the S versus the P? When you see the plot, you'll have proof of that, so be patient. Next is we get one more kinetic energy velocity for um, an electron, which is 384. We're going to assume, again, we'll prove that those are the S electrons in the 1S, we can then calculate that their binding energy, the 1s electrons, are 870 electron volts. Look at the dramatic increase in binding energy for a 1s electron. So you might be saying, well, how do you know those are those electrons? So when the plot is, is created, 
Uh, I made this one myself, made it simple. You've got 1,000 on one side, zero on the other, binding energy and electron volts, and you get two peaks that are the same size. That's kind of showing you that this one is the 1s and this one is the 2s to paint because they're the same height. That's showing you that that's two electrons total. See the relative number of electrons, again, remember, are on these axes, okay? Next, look at the triple height of this one, which we'll assume then that's the 2p. So you've got six possible electrons that can be removed. So again, a quick review. Look at the large difference in energy between those energy levels. Next, look at the fact that the positions of the peaks are relative um, to kind of their sublevels and where they're located, especially the p, um, less tightly bound than the s. Last but not least, look at the fact that, again, the height of the peak is proportional to the number of electrons, um, and we kind of knew that this was neon. So what would happen if you had an unknown element? Um, so I found a question that we can do. It's from the 2019 uh, released exam, so you can get your hands on this by just looking it up on the internet. Preferably don't do that first. Go through and try to answer it yourself. So the first thing is take a look at your axes. This one's joules this time. Look at the numbers, 647. I know it seems weird, but they wanted to keep the exponents the same. And then you've got 0 0.980 to the negative 18th. So again, it's just like the graph that I created. You've just got little better peaks that are created here. So again, you're looking at what kind of element could have this kind of spectrum. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six unique peaks. After that, the AP test wanted you to calculate the wavelength in meters of the valence electron. So that's kind of testing, do you know which one of these peaks is the valence electron? It should be the one that's the least tightly bound. So it should be the energy right here. So let's say you're stuck saying, I don't know what to use, but on the AP test, you might have some formulas. So these are some of the formulas that you would want to have um, available or on the AP exam. And then this one usually isn't there, so you have to create that one yourself. You would be given Planck's constant and the speed of light. I'm going to come back to this graph that I got from this site. So let's go back to the question. So what do you think this element is? So look at the fact that these are all probably what are called S2s. So you might say you've got 1s2, 2s2. Look at the height is triple, so a 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And then a 4s2, so find a periodic table and find what element that is. Also think about how you'd calculate that energy. So here are the answers. So we do have argon 4s2. Keep in mind, again, if I go back, you've got, um, this is all the same for argon, and then this is the 4s2, the valence shell. It is calcium. If you didn't get um, I right, you would just be basing it off of your answer here so you could still possibly get the identity right if it matches what you had in I. Then you can take the the energy of that highest um, uh, valence electron which is the least tightly bound. Using those formulas you can calculate that it's 2 to the negative 7th meters. So what I'm going to do is place that on this plot. It didn't ask us this but I was interested to see what kind of energy would have to go in so it's between here and here, so somewhere along this line, so it's probably somewhere between um, visible light to ultraviolet, most likely ultraviolet light with this picture. All right, so hopefully this helped you um, figure out how to use PES in chemistry, and good luck chemists, especially those of you taking the AP Chem exam.